guys, it's a girl Molly. It's a girl Molly. It's a girl Molly. It's a girl Molly. It's okay, this is something what I really sing. I, you know what? I think I need to get a whole song for that and then we can dance to it. I'll do that. I'll work on that. Anyhow, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I am Melanie Ramlin, co founder of Don't Speak Defeat to Me, and this is my channel where I bring to you my testimonies, how I overcame stuff. This is also my channel where I give you tips and tricks for dating, as I have my dating 101 series. I will be bringing a few other stuff later on. To come, in time to come so this is just me starting off now um if you're not new to my channel hey boy hey girl welcome back oh we're gonna make that a thing welcome back look we're gonna make that a thing definitely gonna make that a thing anyhow um if you read the title you realize today it's a very um, serious topic and it's a very um not not a um it's not a sensitive topic per se but it's a topic that not a lot of people know a lot of I know a lot of people but not a lot of people know me and I don't really speak on it um I speak on it once or twice but that was it other than that I never really mention it again but you know after i did the whole letting go video you know i was thinking what should be my next video for this channel and you know i heard the holy spirit say speak on your experience and uh, at first i was a bit wary i was a bit um not, not not i wasn't frightened per se but it's something so personal to me that i don't really i'm not i'm not i'm a very private person so for me to open up and share on this channel it's difficult but i realize that's the route that god wants me to go with my channel so the more personal my experiences that I go through the more I will share it with you because I feel sometimes we have something that we go through and we keep it so tight tied up so locked up deep inside that we don't want to share it with nobody but I feel like we there's someone out there who needs to hear it there's someone who needs to know that they alone did not go through it they alone did not suffer so I guess this is my story ah okay uh, let's get straight into the video <laughs> Okay, um, it all started when I was five years old. That's like 17 years aback. Um, yeah, I'm 22. It all started when I was five years and my mom, she had a boyfriend. And we were living with him at that point in time in our lives. And, uh... I didn't expect it would be this hard. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, he started um, touching me. First, he started touching. And you know, at first, as children, you know, we, we don't say anything and we're like, but I was, as a young child, I was a very outspoken person. I was very brave. So, you know, I, I, you know, I remember specifically telling him at one point, you shouldn't be touching me there. And I, he didn't say nothing and he stopped for a while. And then a few time, a few weeks or days probably after he, he started back and you know, and the way he started it, he started to bribe me with certain things. And then, you know, as a child, you know, I now started to think this was normal for a man to touch me in this way. As a young child, I started to think it was normal. So I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't tell mommy. Or maybe if I tell mommy, mommy will get upset. And that was um, that is what I, I, I would think as a child. Um, you're, the, you're probably wondering how I could remember that, but it's a very, uh, it's a very, um, vivid picture that it, in my mind that when it took place, I can't forget it. I can't forget words that were mentioned. I can't forget seeing things that happened. I can't forget it. And 
I remember there's one particular time where I was I was laying on the bed. He was right there next to me and my mom was standing not even 10 feet away. She was so close. She he was he was here on the bed with me and she's standing here. And he is talking with her normally carrying on a normal conversation while he is fondling me. And as a child, I'm I'm looking up at my mother. It's like maybe if she turns around, maybe if she turns around and sees that she it will stop, but she never turned. And you know, I was I was I was very frightened because I was I you know a lot of people go through this and they were raped. But maybe thank God that he was that I wasn't able to reach that state yet. I wasn't able to reach that level where he's he would actually rape me or he would actually penetrate me I think I thank God I didn't reach that stage yet yes I remember it was one particular evening where he he and my mother got in the altercation and he hit her and when he hit her she said you see me I cannot take this again that's Shini slang by the way I cannot take this by the way I cannot take this I gone and he had picked up himself and left and when he left that was her moment to escape and she she um she picked up her she picked up me and she ran she didn't have time to pack clothes pack bags nothing she was so frightened she ran and I remember she went to some friends they carried her to the police station and when we were in the police station, they took a statement and then the, they took me inside a separate room and they had a female officer who questioned me and I told her everything that he did to me and they both, so the female officer and another male officer went with my mom and I to go back to the apartment to get our stuff. And they had their guns, they were strapped, and one of the police officers said that if they see him, they'll shoot him on sight. Because whatever, what they have on him, because of my statement, he could be locked away for years. And when we went, he wasn't there. So we were able to make a smooth, smooth exit. And we left. And after that, I never looked back. When I was around seven years old... It almost happened again but this time it was someone I was close to I'm not going to go into too much details with this because people could put two and two together I was around seven eight years old and I I was coming from I was in church in the back of this back of a car and I decided to be fondled and from my from my early age I was I was developed. I hit puberty really early and didn't say anything. I didn't tell anyone. I kept that secret locked inside for years, years. I only told my mom in 2018. And after that I went on with my life normal. But my life wasn't really truly normal because I never really wanted to be amongst men. I never wanted to be amongst male friends. I didn't want to be alone with males. I I develop a fear towards them because in my in my subconscious they would always want to take advantage of me. And that's why I started to wear long clothes. I started to cover up. I started to I started to hide because as I was in my head I'm thinking maybe if I cover up myself they wouldn't they wouldn't they wouldn't do me anything. And even walking the streets fully covered, you know, men would cat call and men would make rude remarks towards me and I would feel very I would feel very uncomfortable like I'm, I'm I'm like I should be in a bubble locked up no one should be able to speak to me no one should be able to touch me because of these two experiences and it was really really hard going through my teenage years dealing with that I was very reserved at a point I built a 
a form of resentment towards my mother because I thought she should have protected me. Maybe, maybe if she had turned around that moment, it could have stopped. But you know, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I had resentment towards her. I didn't want to speak with her. I didn't want to be in the same room with her. And it took me years, re really long years, because I, I. <sighs> I would sabotage every friendship, every, re if I decide to go into a relationship, I would sabotage it because of the hurt that I was carrying. I did not deal with it. I did not get over it. And I didn't want anyone to be close to me and I would hurt them. So I would rather push you away and hurt you now than I hurt you in the long run because it made no sense. I don't understand. I really don't understand what I was thinking back then, but it made no sense. But you know, and I was really, I was really scared of men. Like, and then my self esteem took a hit. I lost confidence. I lost, I lost all hope in males. And you know, another thing I thought to myself: maybe if I had a father, this would not have happened. Maybe I would have been protected more. Maybe I would have been happier. Maybe I would have been living, living a safer life. And I had to come to terms with that as well, that I didn't have a father to protect me. So now looking back, it was in 2018. After I told my mom, I got that off my chest. It was, it was, it was like a weight off of my chest. It was like a weight off of my shoulders. But I still did not let them go. I was harboring hatred towards them. I didn't want to see them. I didn't want to talk to them. You know, I didn't I didn't want to be nowhere near them. I was like, I was thinking the most vile, murderous thoughts towards them. If they could just die and that's it. Like, and you know, a lot of my family would tell me, she's like, they would be like, I don't understand why you're such a man hater. They started to call me a man hater because I was like I, at a point in my life, I was like, I don't want a man. I don't need a man. M man. Man is not the best thing in the world. That's, that's not what I said, but I just, I'm just going to bring it to, I'm censoring it. Yeah, I was like, man is not the best thing in the world. And I just hate them. I just hate them, you know. And I, you know, you know, I started to read my Bible and get closer with God. And then when God said, submit to your husband, and I read that, I was like, I'll never submit to a man. I'll never submit to my husband. I must never submit to him because he will take advantage of me. You know, I always thought, um, that was in my head that th that my husband would take advantage of me. I didn't want a man, eh? but I'm thinking about my husband. And then I was like, you know what? I will never submit to a man, so I'll therefore I'll never have a husband. I had reached a point where I didn't want to get married. I didn't want to have children. I didn't even want to have sex. I don't, I didn't want nothing with the form of sex in it. I didn't want intimacy, nothing. I didn't want to hear nothing about it. I didn't want to know nothing about it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You know, and my friends, you know, they would be talking and they would bring it up and I would just block it out. Or if I do entertain it, you know, I, I, I would still be uncomfortable. And then I started to, you know, I, I decided, and then when my confidence got low, I started to look at myself in my and I started to nitpick at every little thing. Like my hair was too curly. I wanted it straight. I wish I was taller. I wish I was slimmer. You know, all these stuff I wanted to change about myself. Because in my mind, I'm thinking if I change myself, maybe I, maybe that person that I'm changing into could be a whole, that person didn't have to go through what I went through. And I'm in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I wanted to change my name. I wanted to change how I walk. I want to change how I talk. And that's why I developed the identity issues. And I was like, I would start to pattern myself after people that I like. I, I was like, oh, I like her personality. I like how she says this. I would say it this way. Or I like how he does this. I will walk this way. And, you know, I was really... I was really hiding in a shell you know I I thought I was the most ugliest person on the earth you know people say like no you're so beautiful you're so pretty you have such nice skin you could be a model and I'm like yeah 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 whatever you're just saying that to be kind that was my mentality and you know I would be around my friend I would be around my friends and I'd be like they're prettier than me they're nicer than me 
um, boys like them more. And the, th the thing is that I started to find faults in myself and every little flaw that I had, I started to nitpick at it. I wanted to change it. And you know, I did, and I started to hate myself because of the insecurity. I started to hate myself that I wasn't loved. I wasn't worthy enough to be loved. That was my mentality. And having to deal with all of that was hard. It was really hard because I, you know, I reached a point in my life where that's where it also took with the self-harming as well. I reached a point where I wanted to self-mutilate -mutil myself. I wanted to self-harm. And I still have the scars, but it's, you're not really going to see it because they're fair, but they're there. And I was like, you know what, something needs to change because I was like, I'm not happy. I am not happy. This girl that I know, she deserves much more than this. I'm not happy. And I decided, you know what, let me go on a self-love journey. Let me learn to love myself. And you know, every morning I started to practice this. I would wake up in the morning and I would look at myself in the mirror and I would smile because I hated my smile. So I would smile and then I would look for three things that I liked. And to be honest, it was really hard to find three things that I liked because I often found the things that I didn't like. So it was hard to look at myself in the mirror and say, I like my eyes. Oh my God. I like my nose. I like my lips. I like my hair. And eventually I started to name things on my body that I liked about me. Until I could come to terms with the body that I had and, and, and appreciate what I had. Then I started to look for things in my personality that I liked. I was like, I love to laugh. I like my laughter. I like to be funny and make people laugh. I like to be kind. I started to look for things in me. But while I was working on those stuff, I was also working on me as well. I was also working on my, how I wanted to speak. I was like, maybe if I had spoken up, something would have changed. So I decided I would become more outspoken. All of this took place in 2017, 2018. That's how long it took me. And I started to, I was like, okay, if I don't like this, I'm going to tell you I don't like it. If I like it, I'm going to tell you I like it. And, you know, it was really hard for me because I had locked up all my emotions. So, you know, it's like I had turned the, the switch off on my emotions. So it's hard for me now to open back up that well, to dig deep, to find the emotions that I had locked on deep inside. And, you know, oftentimes I struggled. To f I was like, okay, um, this is exciting, but... How do I show excitement? You know, and it was really hard to, my God, it's really hard to show my emotions. If I was happy, it was hard to show my emotions. If I was sad, it was hard. And then it reached a point where I was like, okay, I am at peace with who I am. And my, and my walk with Christ really, 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 truly began. So I started to find peace within God. I started to find my self-worth within God. I started to find validation within God because I, I realized I could not seek it from friends. I could not seek it from family. I couldn't even seek it from my own self. I needed to find it within God. I needed, and I found my identity in Him. Then it reached a point in 2018 where I had to forgive. It was the most, most, most hurtful night that I had because I was praying and I heard the Holy Spirit say call them out by their names and forgive them it was hard because I remember kneeling on that floor I couldn't even say their names properly because I was stuttering I didn't want it's like something in me didn't want to let go and 
I had to call her names out and I had and I was like, Lord, I forgive this person. And I called their full name. Some I didn't know their full name, but I called it out. And in that moment, I never felt more free than in than in my in my whole life. I've never felt more free. I've never felt such liberty and freedom from that one moment where I had to let them go. And then the part that hurt the most was I had to forgive myself. And then it reached a point where I was like, okay, I forgive myself. Now time to move on. And I started working on me. And I was like, you know what? I want I want to be a voice to the voices. I want to be a voice to to young girls who didn't have a voice or who don't have a voice. I started to so you know I started to talk on it. And I didn't speak much on it, but you know I started to write poems. I started to write songs. I started to write spoken words, and that's how I found my release. Because maybe by sharing my my experiences and maybe share my work I would bring some form of relief to somebody and let them know that it's okay and they could seek help they could reach out for help I wanted to be a source of comfort to those girls or young men out there who went through something that I did or even went through worse to let them know that it's okay somebody who understands somebody who was depressed like you somebody who was oppressed like you somebody who didn't know who they was just like you because I had allowed the molestation to be my identity. Wow, that's a whole word. I had allowed that to take over my whole being that I didn't know anything outside of that. So when I had to really do some soul searching and finding myself, I can now sit here today and speak about this experience because I am healed. And I want someone to be healed as well. So, you know, by sharing my testimony, I want to touch as many lives that I can as possible and let them know that you went through it, I went through it, but we can come out victorious. We can come out everything that we want to be. Don't allow that rape to stop you from fulfilling your dream. Don't allow that, that molestation to stop you from wanting to be a mother. Don't allow that to stop you from being who God called you to be. Because we, we are more than conquerors and we have so much in store and he has so much that he has planned for us that if we don't let go of the past and move forward, we'll just stay stuck in that same old stinking thinking, that same old horrible mentality, that same old victim mentality, that doomsday mentality that nothing will ever work out. And I want you to let you know that it's okay to take that first step forward. It's okay to reach out. It's okay to talk. It's okay to let somebody know. It's okay. And you have to trust that adult. And you have to ensure that you know that adult will take the step to protect you. That is why this video is up. That is why this video up. That is one of the reasons why you, I, I agreed with the name the Holy Spirit gave me for my ministry. Don't speak defeat to me. Because I didn't, I, after a while, I did not allow my molestation to speak defeat to me. I didn't allow the sexual abuse to speak defeat to me. I spoke defeat to it. I commanded defeat upon it and I rose above it. So if I can do that, I know that you can do it. So if you want to reach out to me and you want to talk, I'm going to put my email down below and I'm going to put my social media and you can reach out to me on any of those platforms. And we're going to talk. And if you want me to give you a call, just reach out to me. Send me your number and I will call you and we will speak and we and I will let you, and I will and I will be your voice. I will be your protector. If that is is only that's only if you want it. This is for the people that need their story to be heard. So if you feel like your story needs to be told, reach out to me. 
and I want to form a sisterhood, a brotherhood of people, of young men and young women who are just like me, where we can raise, uh, rise above it, where we can take the stand and say enough is enough. We will thrive, we will flourish, and we will survive. We are survivors. So I thank you all for listening to my testimony. And I pray that it really reaches out to some of you. It really touches you. And if you know somebody who went through something similar to this, you share that video with that person. You share this video and let it touch the lives and the hearts. Let's get this video to go viral. Basically. Because sometimes we need something good to go viral. We need someone speaking good to go viral. And I'm not boasting of myself, but I'm just in a moment where I feel like somebody needs to hear this. So the more that we can share it and the more we can get it out there, the more people's lives can be touched and can be changed and can be transformed. So I thank you all for watching. I love you. God loves you. Stay blessed. Be strong and courageous. Have a blessed week weekend or have a blessed month easter's coming up let's give god all the glory and the praise because he deserves it so i love you guys bye